I love using the Lindy's Fuzzy Grubs for fishing for trout, panfish, and crappies. Heck man, this, this used to be the bomb. I don't know if you guys remember this. Basically Lindy's came out with uh, soft plastic with marabou tails. I used to buy them up to do my trout and crappie fishing. But I make my own these days and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can make your own. Because making your own, you can use a different type of plastics. I'm going to also cover a different type of plastics and show you guys that making your own is actually better than buying the Lindy version. So with that said, let's get started. For this project, you'll need a couple of things. The most important thing is right here, this tool. This tool is to help you thread your bobbin pins for fly tying. But we're going to be using this to pull the material through your soft plastic. Speaking about soft plastics, you have a couple options here. And in fact, at the end of the video, I'll talk more about plastics. But you guys can take your favorite grub, depending on whatever size you want, or some worms and cut it to the size you want it for the body. Next comes the material. I mainly use marabou at different colors, but as you can see here, you bring in other stuff such as these are Mylar Crystal Flash, very thin micro ones. And for this one here, I have Craft Fur. I think your choice is unlimited here, so use your creativity. Heck, I might even try some hackle feathers such as these. Other things you will need are scissors and super glue. Cheap ones will work. And lastly, if you want to bring on your hooks with you at this time, because it's actually a perfect time too, you can glue your lure onto your hook because it'll stay on a lot longer. Just like this one right here. So for simplicity's sakes, everyone, I'm just gonna take this brand new grub tail right here. This is from a very, very old Mr. Twister. This is a pumpkin pepper color, which is nice. I like to have some sort of dark natural color body, and then I would like to put on a very bright color tail. So the first thing I'll do is, get this focus, is I'll get rid of the curly tail right here. And as you see, this makes it very easy because this is ripped, and if you have a hook, size that you want to specifically uh, create this lure for, you can just measure it. For instance, I have a lot of these lures hooks right here. These are 1 32nd ounce. And all I need is up to here. So I'm going to cut it right here. Just rip the body off. And likely, I'm going to use the back end again somewhere else. So I'm going to put this one on the side for, for probably a smaller hook somewhere. But for now, what we do is, and I'm going to show you two different ways. The first way for small bodies is that you could just technically thread through the entire thing. Very easily. Just like that. Take this tool. Push it through. And what you want to do is push this through all the way. You can squeeze that to make it easier. So that the opening opens up wide enough for you to put your material through here. And it gets secured right here. So the next step, let's pick some materials. And again, I want to do some marabou today. So I have marabou feathers here. And let me grab this orange one right here. No, this one's actually good. So let's take a look at this marabou for a second. All right? It's very long and also this back part right here is super duper thick. And you don't want this end piece to be pulled through. So you actually need, you should just trim this spot and make it smaller, thinner, and it's easier to go through your soft plastic. I'm actually going to use this one right here because I want to demonstrate. So, first thing, and it might be easier to do it this way, and right now I'm actually stroking the feather because there's some clumps in there that's uh, stuck. I just want it nice and smooth, so that's, that's good enough. So what you want to do is take this, get it into right about where, where it's nice and soft, and see this back part that's hard? We'll just trim it off with just a little bit. You don't want too much stuff there because it's going to be hard to pull, the plas pull through the plastic. Then you pull, pull through right here just like so. And you don't need to pull it all the way through yet because what's going to happen, but I will pull it all through, but depending how long your materials are, what you want to do is stop at a certain area. And um, as you saw, this, this actually popped off. Although it popped off, that's okay. You can still pull it from here. The next part is we're going to put some super glue on it so it actually stays onto your soft body. Now, what you do is, let's get your super glue. And you want to dab it right at the base. And I didn't do a good job on this one because it's supposed to come out right in the center. But it came on the side, but it's okay. It's okay. So yeah, dab a little bit right on the feather where the feather meets the plastic. Alright. Then you take this and you actually start pulling it through. 
And what that will do is it will get the super glue to the center so it actually stays on longer. And all you do is just trim this in the back. And presto. Now, like I said, if you want to glue this right onto a hook right now, you can do so. All you do is slide it through, add some glue onto the shank, a little bit near the end of the head or just on the plastic itself. And then you push it all the way through and you got your lure. So for three inch grub tails, you have a bigger body. And when you have a bigger soft plastic body, it's actually a lot more difficult to stick this whole thing through. I mean, even the, with the small one earlier, you have seen me struggle sticking this thing through, especially like looking through the camera. I wasn't able to get through the exact center of the soft plastic. Well, imagine doing that with a longer piece of plastic and these are thin wire, just bobbin th uh, pin threader. It gets really tough. So what I do is, instead of sticking through the, the whole thing, I just go halfway in, like maybe right around here. Okay. Then I rotate and put this through an angle and try to get it out as close as possible to center. There you go. And then you just put on your tails. So I probably put an orange feather for this one, but like I said earlier, I was gonna try a different piece of material. So I am gonna try, let's double this up. Let's double that up just like that. Okay, and I want it about this long here. So I will probably trim this from, oh, let's give it a little longer so that I can super glue it and also pull it through. So again, you have your material. Stick it through the, the thick side. Secure at the end. And, okay. Good so far. See the black one is a little shorter, so I'm just pull that back out just a little bit. And I'm just gonna yank that off from right there. Okay. That looks really good. Dab some super glue. Right onto the feathers, both of them. Okay, quickly cap these. Pull through. Oh man, it's already sticking. Gotta be fast with these super glue. Alright, and then I'm gonna re bend this guy. Then I'm gonna trim this off and I'm good to go. Look at that. Look at this. This is done. So yeah guys, that is very easy how to make these stuff here. So let me just go ahead and talk about some of the soft plastics that I actually use. So I have, you know, plain worms. These are Zoom, relatively cheap, and they're used. That's the key thing, it's used. Uh, most of the time I throw some bait on the side because they're ripped, but look at the end of this plastic right here. They're perfectly fine. I could use this and repurpose it. Here's all the soft plastics I have that I typically collect either myself, my friends, or just out at the parks because I could reuse these somehow. Another benefit of making it own other than using used plastic is that you can select a different type of plastic materials. For instance, most stick baits have some sort of salt impregnate into them so they actually are heavier. The pro of using these fuzzy grub instead of using things such as a marabou jig head which the body is, they typically use chenille to tie is that plastics are heavier so you can technically be able to get more distance Instead of using marabou or any sort of a cloth type material for the body, use these soft plastics. And depending on what type of plastic, you can control the fall rate. For instance, these are filled with salt, so likely it's gonna fall faster. However, you can actually use plastics like the Z-Man. These are super duper tough, but they also are buoyant. So they technically float, depending on what weight you have, it's gonna fall differently at different rates. In addition, once you fall to the bottom, if you are fishing at the bottom, it might even stand straight up. This gives it a unique action that you've never seen before with the original Lindy Fuzzy Grub. I hope you have found this video useful. If so, please give me a like. If you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And guys, you can use this to do so many things with your solid plastic, not just using it for crappy trout fishing, pan fishing. I actually used this a lot several years ago for bass fishing. For instance, uh, this year, I'm actually gonna be trying this guy here. This is also from Z-Man, their TRD Crawl and they are buoyant. And you guys can check out the video on the top right hand corner. You can see that this is crazy. I would be using this to swim through the waters and hopefully 
entice those crazy smallmouth bass. I know using small stick baits for uh, the net rig baits with this is actually a killer, but now that I have this one right here, I'm sure it's gonna be slaying a lot of fish. Once again, guys, I wanna thank you for watching. Until next time, tight lines.